Everybody will we'll stand and take up the offering this morning. Good to see everybody this morning. Good pray for the service. Pray the Lord this have his way here this morning. Pray for Brother Turd, most of all, pray for the lost one. Travis, you care to pray for us? Dear God, I'm giving it to you, Lord. The rest of the know how, Lord. God, just thank you for another day. God, just another opportunity to come back to your house, Lord, and worship God, we know that we're so unworthy of you, Lord, and we just want to thank you Lord, for coming and paying the cost for us, Lord. Oh, God, just giving your son for us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, just thank you for loving us, Lord, and thank you for saving us, Lord. Lord. Oh, God, just ask you to be at this service this morning, Lord. Just have your way here, Lord. Be with each and every one that's here, Lord, and even the ones that couldn't make it out, Lord. You just know that doesn't matter what what's there, Lord. Oh, God, just Give Brother Terry the words you have him to yes, say. Yes. Just open her heart for your word this morning. In your precious son's name, I pray. Amen. 128. 128. Say 
did say by this morning. I can pray for service for the Lord did have his way here this morning. This morning we'll be having a, a special for building fun. Uh, also, uh, April 30th through May 2nd, we are youth trip to Pigeon Forge. Uh, May 9th, we special for the youth group. Also, May 9th, business meeting. May 30th, youth Sunday. Also, May 30th, union. And special for building fund. Anything else? I think on the, the youth trip, that's this Friday. So, I think uh, everybody's meeting down there. Is that what you're doing? You're meeting so if you need the address, see Miss uh, Sierra. She's got the address and all that stuff too. So. Uh oh. Anything else? Don't forget about the building committee. Uh, building committee, of course. Sir. Yeah, building committee needs to meet right after service this morning. Uh, also. Uh, uh, Daniel Jones sent me a letter. Uh, I've been talking to him for a while. He's been submitting the plans. It's his, it's his uh, goal to, to move over into full-time missions this year. Uh, Brother Tyler will be taking over as uh, senior pastor there. He's the lead pastor there at uh, Mount St. Uh, but he's doing some medical stuff, and uh, he asked us to pray for him. Uh, just just pray about that. The Lord, uh, you know, I know right now we're kind of tied on funds and different things right now, but maybe it's later on the Lord just leads us that way. We might be able to help them as well. Pray about, pray about the mission. They had over a thousand people. They served over a thousand people last year and had over 90 saves. We can't do too much for missions either. Missionaries. Right. And we know what he stands for. Yeah. Do pray about that. Let's pray about this uh, uh, anything else? Uh, if not, we'll get into the prayer requests. Uh, Gene Osborne, Johnny Triplett, Doug Johnny Fadden, Gary Greer, Clifton and Adam, Dan Stout, Louis Martin, Joe Murray Bishop, Kevin Menard, Reason Family, Carl Forster, Newt Group. David Wilson, Carter Harris, Kennedy Greer, Ashley Wright, Unspoken, Jalen Sutherland, Chris Demain, Parker Robinson, Danny McAulay, Crystal John, Jonathan Monday, Kenny Head, Shirley, Natasha Allen, Alan Cross, James Zeller, Sonny Jennings, and uh, Charles said he's setting up and maybe doing a little better for that for you him. Margaret and Lord Adams, Eddie Cross, Andy Lowe, David Burnett, Sir William, Drew Hodge, Becky Wilson, Eddie, Eddie's family, Ebenezer Christian Home, Ross Dow, <coughs> Zach Walton, Dennis and Hazel, New Building, Amy McCann, Cannon, Chuck Mays, Mary Stanley, Lucas Perdue, COVID 19 victims, Brian Sigmund, Cynthia Phillips, Stacey Dow, James Jennings, Josh Allen, Chris Wallace, Michelle Rose, Donna Riddle, Paul Snyder, Paul Cross, Avery Key, Sierra, you remember her, uh, she's not doing well, so, uh, Vi Crowder, Curry's family, David Ward, Terry Melissa, Amy family, Stacey Pete, Mike Carroll, Mindy Moorfield, Asa Main, Elaine Kirby, Aaron Steele, Stella Payne, in the church, Nursing <coughs> Home, Mitchell Reese, Melissa's family, Dan Hancock, Janice Johnson, Chuck Moorfield, Website Request, Gerald Cooper, uh, Estelle, Estelle McKinney, United States, Don Garrett, Sam and Twins, Margaret Quest, Chris, Jolson Haley, Christine Davis, Connor Eisenhower, Hunter Adams, uh, Elliot Kesher, and Greg Pope. Anybody else? That's it. That's it. Any birthdays coming up this week? Yes, yeah, there is. Dude. Dude over here. Don't give him that means terrible. Oh, you're sitting here, Mark. I think you'll be driving next week. Next week. <laughs> Everybody will. We'll stay and sing. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, brother. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. 
You have to get a job now. No anniversaries. We'll step out now and have a more fellowship. Shake everybody's hand. Tell me glad to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning.
sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down. We're going to your house today. We're going to your house today. Let's do March. Here we go. Let's do March. Jonathan's sake. And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name is Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machar. And they said, And the son of Amalai in Lodibar. Then king David sent fetched him out of the house of Machar, and the son of Amiel from Lodibar. And now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness 
for Jonathan, thy father's sake, and he will and will restore thee all the land of the of, uh, land of Saul, thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at thy at my table continually. Let's pray. Here, Father, we come today, Lord, so much for thee. Lord, I thank you, God, for another day you've given us to be able to come out to worship. Lord, be able to gather together. Lord, may we learn a little more about you. I pray now to heavenly Father, you'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness, all shortcomings, all faults, and all failures. We just put them under the blood. Lord, I pray now to heavenly Father, if there's anyone here among us today, Lord, that stands in need of anything, God, I pray to supply it according to your will. I pray, Lord, for all those on the prayer list, you know, every name and every burden. Lord, I pray for the folks in this house, in this room tonight, today, dear God. Lord, that you'll get these mothers, Lord, uh, these fathers, God, that stand and bring their children out of your house. God, give them encouragement, Lord, give them strength. I pray, dear Lord, you'll help her to have like that. This church to continue to be a light shining out for me. I pray, dear God, in all things, Lord, is done here today. Most of all, there's one that's lost and undone and does not know you. Today would be the day they come to know you. Lead God to rip and everything. And get Jesus with it and we pray. Amen. Amen. I just want to say, I know a lot of us today, we may have heard this story before. I don't know. I don't know if you have ever heard the story about a Mephibosheth or not. If I'd ask you today about Mephibosheth, if you'd even know who he was. Amen. I, I, I got to thinking about him this week and thinking about the story here. And uh, I was thinking about, you know, have you ever felt like, have you ever been... I mean, just on top of the world, amen. I mean, everything going good. Everything's just going all right. And next thing you know, the bottom fell out and you was on rock bottom, amen. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you just, nothing. I mean, it just seemed like everything went wrong. It seemed like there was nothing left to go wrong that could go wrong, amen. Uh, listen, I'm sure a lot of times in our life uh, that we felt that way, uh, that we've been that way. And I want to tell you the story about little Mephibosheth here, amen. Uh, we know that Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, was the grandson of King Saul. Uh, we know Saul was the first king over Israel. We know King Saul went around to love that. Uh, well, let me just tell you something. I don't know if you know this or not. If you was the grandson of the king, uh, you was probably doing pretty good. Amen. Uh, you was probably doing pretty good. You started way well off. You didn't have to wonder about things. You didn't have to worry about things. You didn't have to worry about you might even call him privilege. Amen. You might even call him just a little bit privilege. Hey, but I can tell you right now, just because things look good and things are going good today uh, does not mean that things are going to be going good tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Uh, you might be here today and things not going too good for you. Uh, well, I tell you what I say about on the fiddle chef right here. The Bible said there. We know what about the story of Saul. Uh, Saul was the first king there in Israel. Uh, but we know Saul had already lost his life. Uh, now, I don't know if you know this or not. As you know, we have a lot of transition of power here in America. Amen. Uh, when new presidents come in, transition of power. But you know, in these days of time, uh, it was customary, uh, it was traditional for the new uh, the new king uh, to kill everybody in the family uh, of the previous king uh, so they would not have a line, an heir, uh, so they would not have a bloodline to the throne. Amen. Uh, put them to death, get them out so their family, their line, their bloodline uh, would be able to come in. So let me just tell you, let me refresh this for you real quick. Uh, the Mephibosheth was probably one day playing in the palace. Amen. One day playing in the floor of the house as a, as a small child. And then the next thing you know, he's on a run for his life. Amen. Yeah. He was out the door hiding, plumped down in Lodi Bar. Amen. Plumped down the place where he did, was trying to hide out where nobody, where the king didn't know where he was. Let me ask you something today. Have you done your best job to run from the devil? Amen. Have you done your best job to hide out? Hey, you might be in this morning. You might have been running from y'all. Amen. You might have thought you was hiding out from the Lord. Now, I got news for you. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords have sent out a call. Amen. The Bible said here though David began to make a call out. He wanted to know if there was anybody left. He wanted to know if there was anybody left out there by the under the that was in the bloodline of Saul. Amen. Hey, you know what? That probably brought fear. That probably brought the, 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 the streets of death. That probably brought fear in people's lives. What the 
they thought they might even have just a little bit of blood of Saul in their life. They were doing everything they could to hide out. I've got news for you today. Let me just tell you something. I don't know how long you've been hiding out. I don't know where you hide out at. But God will find you. God will find you no matter where you are. No matter what you've been into. Here David sent out a call. They said yes. There's somebody down there in Lodi Bar. Hey, who had a little is a is a grandson of uh, is a son of Jonathan and the grandson of Saul. Hey, let me tell you right now. Ain't you glad that God can find us? Amen. Amen. No matter where we're at. Fiddleship sure wasn't looking for David, was it? You think Mephibosheth was looking, letting everybody know he was where he was? I remember being in a life of sin, living out there. I wasn't making no proclaims to the people. I wasn't making no proclaims to God where I was, did you? I didn't want him to find me in the shape I was in, did you? Hey, man, well, let me just tell you something about old David here, about Mephibosheth. Bible said that David called down. He asked her, I said, look. Can you imagine getting the news? Can you imagine being my fiddle chef and said, hey, the king's looking for you. The king wants to see you. Can you imagine how bad he felt? Could you imagine what went through his mind? Oh, Lord, this is it. Oh, Lord, this is the day that I dreaded for all the days of my life. All the days of my life, I'm going to have to stand before the king. I'm going to have to make a trip up to the king's house. Amen. Uh, hey, let me ask you something. Uh, what would happen to you if you had to leave out of here and you had to stand before a king today? Uh, I'm not talking about a king. Uh, I'm talking about the king. Uh, what happened if your name got called, your number got chosen? Uh, hey, if you had to go up and stand before God uh, and you had to give an account uh, for those deeds done in this body, uh, how would you like to have to go up there? Uh, or would you try to hide out uh, as long as you can. I've got a news for us all. The day's coming. Hey, the hour's coming. Hey, when our number's going to be called, when our name on the roll's going to be up, hey, we're going to have to stand. Hey, I want to make sure my name's already written down. Amen. 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 Can you imagine Mephibosheth there and what was going on in Mephibosheth's mind when he heard that David the king was looking for him? Mephibosheth probably was scared to death. The Bible said down that he was lame. He couldn't run no more. Amen. I don't know if he's born that way. I don't know what happened. But I can tell you this much. I can tell you he didn't. He didn't. He wasn't able to run no more. Let me ask you. Let me just tell you right now. God's going to get you in a place one day where you have nowhere else to run. You have nothing else. You ain't got a leg to stand on. Amen. And I can tell you what happened here though, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth here. The Bible said that the king called him. And the king called him up there and called him before the, the, to be brought up to David's house. He come out of Lodi Bar. Let me ask you, tell you this too. God called him to come out from where he was and all the hiding that he was done. Let me just tell you what I really want to preach about this morning. I want to preach about it. It don't matter where you're at. It don't matter who you are. I want to just talk to you a little bit, a few minutes here about the grace of God. Amen. Mephibosheth didn't deserve a thing. Amen. Mephibosheth didn't deserve to be able to be out called up to the, to the house of David. He didn't deserve to be called up there. But here's what happened down in Mephibosheth's life. The Bible said that. Hey, the Mephibosheth was down there in Lodi Bar. And David said, you call him up here. I want to do something to him. You know what a lot of us would have done. A lot of us probably hold hate and envy and heart, heart aches in our, in our heart. So 
some of us today probably hold grudges. Amen. Uh, uh, we hold hard feelings toward others. Uh, and you know what David wanted to do? The uh, Bible said he wanted to show him something. Uh, you know what he wanted to show him? Uh, he wanted to show him the goodness of God. Uh, he wanted to show him what God had done for him. Uh, hey, let me tell you something today. Uh, I just want to preach just a few minutes this morning uh, about the grace of God. Uh, it don't matter where you're at. Uh, it don't matter where you are. Uh, I tell you what grace is. Uh, grace is a dirty word for the devil. Amen. Uh, it's a dirty word for the devil because the devil can't do nothing with it. Uh, because he can't explain it. Uh, he can't do nothing with, against it. Uh, he can't uh, fight against it. Uh, because God's grace uh, is for sending his son uh, to die for us. Uh, even while we were yet sinners. Uh, even while we were down at Lodi Bar. Uh, even while uh, we were in a mess running from God. Uh, hey, God still loved us enough uh, to send somebody back and tell us uh, about his good love. What a God. I mean, what a God we had. Amen. You know what you deserve? Huh? Let me ask you about you. Look at grace does not. Grace is not based on my goodness. Amen. Grace is not based on what I've done. Amen. You know what you deserve today? Hey Amen. I know what you probably think you deserve. Hey Amen. Let me ask somebody else about what you deserve. Hey Amen. Look. We deserve nothing. Right. Hey Amen. Look. We come to church today. We're in the house of God. This is all you ever done for the Lord? This is all you ever done for the Lord this week? Probably a lot of us. Well, man, I don't mean to get on your toes and make you mad or hurt your feelings. I'm going to tell you something right now. God's grace ain't about, it, it's, not, it's not limited to how much you serve Him today. It's not limited to how much you work for Him this week. God's grace showed up today because He wanted to give you an opportunity to be able to get out of the mess that you're in, to be able to step out from hiding out there and doing nothing, and step out to where you can do something. What a God it is! Hey, it's willing to give me a little grace. But you would tell what the gospel, what the grace is. This old book right here is the gospel of grace. Amen. It tells us how much God's willing to do and how much God. God's willing to forgive, not look over, not sweep under the rug. I will forgive you up if you're willing to give it to him. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. God's grace. It's an amazing thing. Yeah. You know what God's grace is? It's unearned. Undeserved. Amen. And unrepayable. Yeah. Hey man, I can't do nothing to pay for it. I can't pay God back for what He's done. No way I can pay for what God's done. What a God it is. I was sitting there and he caught on my food shift. God's grace. You deserve to die and go to hell. You know that? You deserve to be put to death. As everybody in here today, the Bible says to him, the wages of sin is death. The way, get this, the wages of sin is death. You know what that means? That means you deserve to die. Not just on this side, amen, and then go on over to heaven where everybody else thinks, thinks they're going to go because they serve a God that's not, that's, uh, that loves them and won't send them to hell. And they're exactly right. God never sent anybody to hell. We did that on our own. Amen. amen. I, I punched that ticket. I bought that ticket. Hey, when I see it, and I left it, when I go out of this world, the only way I'm going to get to heaven is because I accepted Jesus as my Savior. Amen. Not because of my merits, but because of the grace of God. Amen. Not because of me. I can't pay it back. I deserve to go to hell. I can't pay it back. He paid a price that he did not owe. I owed a debt that I could not pay. And he was willing to ransom it all. Amen. Amen. Thank you. He was willing to ransom it all for me and for you. God's grace. Unearned. 
Undeserved. You know what grace is? Grace is a power to change your life. Yes. Amen. Grace is a powerful thing. It'll change your life if you let it come in. Yeah. Look here. Let me read you something. Second Timothy says this. Be strong in the grace that is Jesus Christ. He gives me power. He said, First Peter, he said, is as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Second Peter also said this, to grow in grace. It is the power to give us the ability to grow. It's the power to be able to give us the ability to stand. It's the power to change my life from what it was. Let me tell you right now, there's a lot of people in this world that can make, make proclaim that they can change you. There's a lot of things people in this world that say they help you, but they ain't never been anybody that can change you from the inside out like Jesus can. And the grace God is willing to see where you are, see what you do, see where you've been, see what you've done, and still love you enough and to change you and set you on a new course. Amen. 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 Yes. If we was on the course that we lost was on, we would be headed to hell. Right. I'll guarantee you, there's a lot of people in the house today still on that course. I have no idea about your salvation. I have no idea about your salvation. But I can tell you this. If I go out here and I leave out of here and I head toward Adam and I get over there and I get on 81 and I get on there and no matter what exit I get on for 1927 no matter where I get on at if I get on that exit and I get on 81 North, where do you think I'm headed to? Headed North. Amen. Headed North. Man said New York City. One of the, probably one of the most ungodliest places on earth. Amen. One of the most ungodliest places probably there ever was and ever will be. If I stay on 81 North, and I continue headed toward New York City. And I camera down, son. I, I want to change. I mean, I got some good tunes on the radio. I mean, I'm listening to good gospel music. I, man, I'm going to church. Hey, every, every Sunday I pull off and I go to church. Every Wednesday night I pull off and I, get, I get, go to church. I get back on 81 North. Where do you think I'm headed to? Hey, man, where do you think I'm going to end up at? I can tell you exactly where I'm going to end up. I'm going to end up at the end of 81 North. Wherever it is me up at, that's where I'm going to end up at. Hey, but the only way to change that uh, is to get changed uh, and get on a different road. Uh, not do the same thing that I used to do. Uh, hey, get repentance. Uh, that don't mean uh, being sorry for what you've done. Uh, hey, the devil's sorry for what he's done. Uh, the devil, hey, let everybody be sorry for what they've done. Uh, hey, but I can tell you right now, uh, the old true repentance is this, uh, that you give it to God uh, and you go a different way. Uh, hey, if you ain't never had a different walk, uh, you ain't never had a different talk. I'm willing to take God's grace today and take him up on changing my life. Amen. 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 Ain't never been a change. I got saved. I don't remember no change when you're in the same place. You never got saved. <laughs> I mean, I ain't I, I here to make people doubt this morning. I here to make you question or wonder. I'm here for you to find out. Hey man, God's grace showed up today. Yeah. God's grace won't leave you there. God's grace ain't gonna lie to you. God's grace ain't gonna tell you you're all right. Just sit back there and be okay. God's grace ain't gonna tell you you're all right. You go out of this church and do the same thing you've been doing. You're okay. You're safe. And you know what the Bible tells me, brother? 
Bible tells me not to take my, my liberty and to use it as a cloak of malice. You want to know what that means in our terms? That means, listen up here. That means, listen. That don't mean you can go out and do whatever you want to and still go to heaven. Amen. Bible said this in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 12. I, I believe it was. He said over there, he said, he said over there, talking about the whoremongers. He tells the adulterers and fornicators, all these things. You know what he said about them? He said, murderers, adulterers, adulterers. He said, fornicators, those that abuse themselves of mankind, all these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You know what he said? But such were some of you. You know what that means? If I was aware, I used to be a was, and I'm a now, I'm with him. And I can tell you, I got changed all because God's grace showed up. Amen. He said that word to Mephibosheth. He knew where Mephibosheth was. Look, don't you think for one minute that God didn't know you'd be here today? Don't you think for one second that God's grace didn't come looking for you? Don't you think for one second that God can't handle it? God's grace remembers us. God's grace pursues us. It comes after us. God's grace is willing to carry us. Mm -hmm. The Bible said there, but the ship was lame. Mm -hmm. God, the Bible said there that he was lame on his leg. <laughs> you think a fish ship walked from Rhoda Bar up there to the king's house? What did David do? We got it. He sent somebody to get it. Amen. He sent somebody after him. Let me just tell you something. You don't have to worry about coming to meet Jesus. All you got to do is be willing to put one foot forward. Yeah, yeah. And I promise you the Holy Spirit did the rest. Amen. Yeah, Holy Lord. Spirit will carry you on down. You just got to be willing to go. He's carried me through a whole lot. He's carried me through some tough times. He's carried me through some rough times. Hey, I promise you the Lord's never let me go. His grace will carry you through. His grace will carry you to the very end. It'll help you when nothing else is there. I'll tell you what it help. Grace will help you do. Can you imagine this? They didn't have Walmart back this time. This side, y'all know that. There wasn't a dollar store on every other corner. Dollar Tree. Dollar, dollar General, Dollar Tree. It wasn't a dollar this and a dollar that. Whatever they was. These folks had to work for a living. Not for a living. These people had to work to eat. Exactly. Planting fields. You don't work, you don't hoe. Amen. Don't work in the sheets. Had to hoe. There was nothing to see. What do you think he's going to do? You think he's going to be able to get out there and hoe that garden? No. You think he's going to be able to get out there and plow? No. You want to tell you what's going to happen? I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> A lot of us live a crippled life. Yeah, not do nothing. Can't do nothing. Can't. We ain't no good to our family. We ain't no good to our co-workers. We ain't no good to nobody around us. We're living hindered up, crippled down by the temptations and the trials of this work. You know what the grace of God will help you do? It'll help you abandon a crippled life. Amen. Um, <laughs> hey I was my fiddle chef all crippled up. Down there in the land of Lodabar, hiding out from everybody. And all of a sudden, the word of the king came. You can read the rest of the story. You can read the rest of the chapter. You'll find out David sent word out to, to go down there and to get him. He said, you go down there and get him and you bring him up here. Thought he was going to kill him. Amen. Thought, thought he was going to kill him. He got up there and he showed him the grace of God. Hey Amen. He was worried probably one day, worried about being a crippled, wondering about how he's going to plant the vineyard, who he's going to get to help him, how in the world he's even going to survive. Next day, you know what the Bible said right there? The Bible said that he told him, he said, I'm going to show the grace of God to him. He'll eat at my table. You can read on over in there. He says he sits down at the king's table daily. How do we tell you God loves you enough to get you out of the mess and the stuff you've been feasting on and get you down to his table? You know what else he did? He said something 
somebody back to plow the field. He sent somebody back to till the ground. I'm going to tell you right now, leave your past in the past. Come down and dine at the king's table. Never head bowed, never eye closed, or Christians praying, never heart served. I say leave your past in the past. Leave your past in the past. Leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. Maybe you're here today. I'm going to ask you a serious question. Has there ever been a change in your life? I'm not talking about a small change. I'm talking about a big change. When Jesus moved in, it was a big change. You ever get off the road you was on and get on a new road? If you had never done that, then today is your day. Today is your day. God's grace is right here waiting on you. If you're here today and you've never been saved or you've never had a change in your life, would you be honest with yourself and honest with God? Slip your hand up and right back down and say, Preacher, pray for me. Pray for me. Maybe you're here this morning and say, Preacher, I'm not really sure. I don't know whether I'm saved or not. I, I, I'm confused a little bit this morning. Would you help me pray? Help me pray. Maybe you're here this morning and say, Preacher, I know I'm saved. But I'm on the wrong road. I need to get off. I need to get turned around get back where I once was. Would you help me pray? Sip them up, put them right back down. Sip them up, put them right back down. Amen, amen. Good. I hope everybody here today is saved, ready to go and living for the Lord. <coughs> You're not living in sin and living for the Lord. You're not doing both. God loves you enough, though, to give you a chance for life today. To get rid of all that. To make a new step for Him. To walk with Christ. Maybe you're here today, maybe you got a burden on your heart. You'd like to step and pray about it. Would you slip your hand and say, Pray for me? Amen, amen, amen. Amen. I'm going to see things doing up all your life. Amen. I want you to know whether you raised your hand or whether you did. Altars open for anyone for any reason. You just want to come. Give to God. Would you come? Would you come? She's going to play one more verse. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. What an awesome Savior that we serve. Who has given unto us God's riches at Christ's expense. Has given us grace. Unmerited, unearned, undeserved, and unrepayable. What a God. He loves you. I hope today everybody's saved and ready to go. Live your life for Christ. Live it for Him. Jason, you pray for us.
Do you be much in prayer about this and all the things we're going to get ready to build down here and all the things that get lined up? Do also ask the reminder that the build, uh, all those on the building committee, please hang around for just a few moments after church. Uh, at this time, we'll ask a blessing on the church, on the on this offering, and uh, I'll ask your brother Dennis who ask that blessing. Father, it's again, we thank you for another time. God, Thank you for the message that we have heard this morning, Heavenly Father. And God, we just ask that you see your deep in each of your hearts, God, and help us to be a better Christian than we have been. Yes. Now, God, we ask to do this and just bless in the offering and message today, Heavenly Father, because if you're going to help build us a, a church, God, we yes. can have more room and get the law seen. And God, we have one person that is special on our heart right now, God, yes. if you just speak to that heart because he tells me that he just ain't ready to have any part in going to heaven. So God, we just don't to touch his heart. Continue God. to bless him every way in me and fill him. Give you the praise in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. As you give this morning, do remember as you get ready to leave today that you, as we go out there, let's let that light shine that somebody might want what we have. Shake somebody's hand, tell you love, and God bless you.